Um, I want to talk a little bit about Yoko Ono, the famous Japanese artist and widow of John Lennon. Um, who I might add is very accomplished in her own right. Sometimes that's overlooked. Um, you know, John Lennon, Yoko Ono, that whole relationship is something that I've been interested in for a long time. Um, I was watching a biographical film last night from 1985 just called John and Yoko. John is played by Mark Mark McGann and Yoko was played by Kim Miyori, I believe. Um, it's a TV film, not like you could tell it's a TV film, but it's worth watching. Anyway, there's one issue I want to address, uh, which always comes up with so-called Beatles fans, um, and that is this hatred of Yoko Ono. And that's a strong term to use, but it, it is outright hatred at times. Um, the same applies to other people involved in John Lennon's life, and there's a few things I'd like to point out. Firstly, before I talk about Yoko Ono, I want to talk about Mark David Chapman, of course, the killer of John Lennon. Now, let's make no mistake about it, he was a deeply troubled young man who killed somebody in cold blood. He was a murderer, so I have no sympathy for Mark David Chapman. However, there's a huge amount of hypocrisy from hardcore John Lennon fans. And by the way, uh, in regards to my own stance, I, I call myself a fan insofar as I like his music, but not a fan insofar as I'm not sycophantic towards him. And I believe that sycophants, sycophancy is something that's quite a big problem among certain sports fans, certain music fans. Um, it, it's a real thin line between admiring and respecting someone and just becoming a sycophant and not being blind to any faults that they have. Uh, I came across, um, without going off on a tangent, I came across a very compelling list of reasons why John Lennon was actually quite a hypocrite but I'm not going to get into that in this video because that's already well covered and I do believe he probably made up for some of that in the last years of his life so I don't, I don't want to sort of go on about that but um, I will say this, John Lennon was not the absolute saint that his followers make him out to be um, he had many many flaws and uh, of course we all do but the difference is not all of us are famous rock stars who get uh, adulated so that is why it is important to point that out. Um, regarding Yoko Ono, oh, sorry, I, I should talk about Mark David Chapman. I'm just going to get onto that. Yeah, one thing I notice is in a lot of videos with his interviews and biographies of him and so on, um, John Lennon fans are like, "I would kill this little turd. I would. I wish he died. Uh, I wish he got fried in the electric chair. This sort of thing." And I'm thinking, well, okay, I can understand anger at Mark David Chapman because he killed someone who was admired by millions of people, but the hypocrisy is astounding, because that is exactly the opposite of what John Lennon preached throughout the 70s, which was pacifism. I mean, John Lennon would be turning in his grave if he knew the sort of sentiments being levelled against Mark Chapman. So, hardcore Lennon fans don't seem to realise how stupid they sound when they wish... Mark Chapman to be tortured and to be killed and so on and so on. Um, the same applies to Yoko Ono. Now, hardcore Beatles fans forever demonise her as the woman who be broke up the Beatles. Incidentally, this film, John and Yoko, shows quite a fair perspective on that. Um, it shows Yoko's perspective as much as anyone's. Um, the idea that the Beatles were going to last forever is stupid. There's very few bands that last forever. Most most major successful music bands have fallouts. It is inevitable. When you have four people who are all very talented in their own right, especially when you have two guys like John Lennon and Paul McCartney who are huge talents, of course there's going to be ego clashes. So to blame all of this on a woman who came halfway through is ridiculous. Um, maybe the relationship with Yoko Ono was a distraction, um, I'm not a hardcore Beatles fan, so I'm not going to say I know all the ins and outs of it, but based on what I do know, I think it's ridiculous to blame it all on Yoko Ono for breaking up the Beatles. The fact of the matter is, the Beatles were going in different directions anyway. So blaming it all on Yoko Ono, I think, frankly, I've just read a comment, and uh, it's a comment, frankly, I would agree with. I think there are a lot of male Beatles fans 
who use his hatred of Yoko supposedly breaking up the Beatles to hide their own misogyny um, and frankly racism as well uh, and there's a very ugly side to that and you know what is hypocritical about it John Lennon obviously loved Yoko Ono very dearly and he hasn't got a perfect track record in his treatment of women but he clearly loved Yoko Ono so for then so called John Lennon fans to say they hate her John Lennon himself would say that John and Yoko are one word they come together so hating her is almost like hating him and that's just ridiculous um, so for the fact they blame her for breaking up the Beatles they blame her for goodness knows what else I think is ridiculous also Yoko Ono um, I've seen a lot of her interviews and a lot of uh, her sort of uh, record and uh, I, I don't consider her a sort of radical extreme person that some people make her out to be now I've made a lot of videos critiquing feminism Yoko Ono Oh, Yoko Ono was a woman of her day. She was she was a feminist in the seventies. She was outspoken on a lot of radical left wing issues. But so was John Lennon. So was a lot of people at that time. I've never seen evidence that Yoko Ono is an extremist. I've never seen evidence that she's an unpleasant person. In fact, quite the opposite. I've always found her in interviews and so on. I'm not saying I'm a fan of hers. I'm not saying I understand all of her arts or something like that, but I just don't understand the hatred against this woman. I, I find her actually quite an amical. I, I find her quite amicable. I don't see any reason, based on any of the interviews I've seen, to me she comes across as soft-spoken, um, gentle. I, I don't see any un unsincere in her views. I don't think she's... I mean, bear in mind, she comes from a very conservative society, Japan. And she had the courage to be very, um, to stand by her own convictions. So surely that shows that she's sincere, at least in that regard. In terms of women, women's independence and so on. So, and also I, I do differentiate between 70s feminism and the feminism of the day. Um, the sort of feminism that John Lennon and New Yorker Ono were endorsing was, in my view, quite different from the feminism today which is petulant, hypocritical, and just rather nauseating. Um, I, I don't have any strong feelings about Yoko Ono. I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a fan of hers, but the, only, the reason I want to make this video is because I just think that a lot of this hatred against her is ridiculous. And it is, frankly, misogynistic and racist. Misogynistic because the sort of insults that some guys are throwing against her are, are, are sexist in nature. And racist because a lot of the insults are also. Um, I, I've just seen one comment that really pissed me off. It was like, "This Chinese bitch beat up the Beatles." Well, number one, she's not Chinese, but even if she was, it's racist. Um, and it just it pisses me off that people can be so stupid and so. I mean, I'm not saying people have to like her. If you don't like her, that's fine. But there's no re any reason to be so hateful. I mean, she is not an unpleasant person it's not like she's a really nasty conniving manipulative um you know based on interviews i've seen her and paul mccartney um as far as i'm concerned they have patched things up but it's uh, the media that likes this thing to keep going this yoko paul war um anyway the, the, there's a few points i'd like to conclude with with this video Number one, um, when it comes to famous people, quite often people in their lives get pilloried in a negative way if that person doesn't seem to be living up to the expectations of the person's fan. And it can be a price of fame. Now, Yoko Ono is accomplished in her own right, um, but in the West, she probably is more famous for being John Lennon's widow. Um... I just think it's it's unsettling when people are so brainwashed by the sycophantic worship of a person, i.e. John Lennon. Now, uh, on one hand, I think Yoko Ono probably has perpetuated this to some extent. She has, in part, been responsible for this personality cult around him. Um, but 
I just don't understand the hatred levelled against her, and I think, frankly, it's rather nauseating. I've I've no hard feelings on Yoko Ono. I'm not a fan of hers, but I'm not. I I certainly don't hate her, and I I think some of these people need to get a life. As for Mark David Chapman, I can understand people hating him, but what I don't get is then when they advocate exactly the sort of thing that John Lennon spoke against, because those people are not honouring John Lennon's memory at all. In fact, they're being quite fake. So, it's just an interesting dynamic. Okay, let me know your thoughts, and thanks for watching.